So here we are with uh, Sergei. He's the top binocular man in all of Kakati. And now we are going to get a nice view. Wow, look at that. Madloba. Zalia Madloba. Sergei, you have one yourself. Five Lari. Don't spend it all in one place. Madloba. Yeah, Thank you. Didi Madloba. Didi Madloba. Yeah. Harusha. Harusha? The blue one is nice, no? This blue one? Uh-huh. It's that. Uh-huh. Uh okay. My how do I take it off here? I, I know how I can take it. Okay. Like this. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? Very good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Fifth, ten, five. Ah. <laughs> now, how much? Twenty. End of end of puppy. Oh. <laughs> Very sweet. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> Be careful. Oh. Pretty. Oh! Wow! Very nice. Very, Very nice cool. job. Okay. Well, we just met the famous woman of Signagi. Didn't get her name. But now we are going to visit the church here on the top of the hill. Maybe she's the, the eldest and the most famous woman. She, uh, she could be the reincarnation of Saint Nino. Saint Nino, of course, the early 4th century, well, Proclaimer of the Christian faith in Georgia. She brought Christianity into the Georgian realm The ancient kingdom of Iberia And she made this cutie Oh. It was a gift from her Hello doggo Look at this little doggo Hello, hello. Beautiful little doggo And at the time that Saint Nino came Into the kingdom of Iberia, the ancient name for Georgia Back then you had the kingdom of Colchis and the kingdom of Iberia next to each other and Iberia which was most of central Georgia today that was ruled by an Iranian dynasty now look I say Iranian they were Georgians but the the origin of the family the Khosroi dynasty the Iberian Miranids their origin was in the Sassanid Empire in modern-day Iran and they came up to Iberia through the Caucasus and came to rule over the swath of territory where Saint Nino eventually descended upon. Alexa, how do you like your lemonade? I would like to you guys introduce my regular lemonade. <laughs> it's like nothing special. Pear soda, Georgian lemonade. Great spread. What's this? Chuchela. Chuchela, chuchela. Chuchela ichioma. Vino. Vino poluslatki. Vino poluslatki hasalki. Konyak. Cognac. Where are cognac? What cognac? Cognac. Wow. Cognac. Yeah. Oh. And what's this? Ajika. Ajika. Yeah. Alcohol? No. Yet. It's ajika. Cutlet, cartoshku, macaron. Aha. A vino. It? Yeah. Vino. Okay. I'll take one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, come on, my mom. Two vases. Hmm. Two vases. No. For the animals, for doggos. It's a good thing. Madloba, Madloba. Gamajos. 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 Babushka Gamajos. Babushka Gamajos. Ah, good babushka. All right, well, we're going to do a little bit of a babushka wine taste test. A little bit nervous for this, to be honest. <laughs> Takes a lot to frighten me, but uh, this babushka wine was. Oh, you know what? Honestly, not bad. Not bad smell. Very fruity, thick. This is like a thick wine. I think she brewed this in her backyard. Babushka wine, Signagi, City of Love, taste test. 2021. You know what? Not bad. Not bad at all.
not bad, really. It's like grape juice. I think you would like this, actually. Maybe you should explain what's in your... Oh, yeah, yeah these are the... <laughs> it's not sex toys, okay, guys? It's not sex toys. These are not toys. sex toys, although they could probably be used as them. This is like uh, dried grape juice slash wine, and then you put it around these nuts, tie it on a string, take a little bite, keeps you up all night. Very nice. This is what uh, soldiers used during the war because you can you can just keep it for a year or so. So, mm -hmm. and as always, military technology takes our species forward. And now we have babushka wine and soldier stuff. <laughs> and that's a review. Six point four. Come on, Kamajoba. Uh huh. Uh, Willie, Willie. And you? Willie? No. Oh. <laughs> Very good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Huh? Good. Is that the week too? Yeah, yeah. Very pretty. Very pretty. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> we love her. We love her. Mwah. All right. Dinner. <laughs> Alexa loves her mules. I love her mules. Come on, Joba. Uh, just, uh, wow, beautiful. Uh, American. 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 New York, New York. Yeah. Madoba, Madoba. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Saint Nino, Saint Nino. Mir Miriam, Nana. Miriam and Nana. Miriam and Nana. Uh huh. Miriam built Okay, okay. Saint Nino. Maloba, Maloba. All right. So Saint Nino came in and she tried to convert them to Christianity. And Saint Nino, she was from Cappadocia, Turkey. You might know it, hot air balloons. Absolutely gorgeous in here. Stunningly, stunningly beautiful. Saint Nino's buried on these grounds. And when she came in early fourth century, beginning of the 300s, King Miriam III and his queen consort, his second queen, Nana, they were pagans, serious pagans. And these were very deeply held beliefs, these pagan gods. And Saint Nino, she wants to change all that. Not every day you see that. A nun on an iPhone 12. <laughs> Modern day nuns. Holy Spring, wanna go see? Mm -hmm. Now the reason Nino came to Georgia, the reason that she came to the kingdom of Iberia, is that she heard that Jesus Christ, his tunic, his shirt, his robe, his seamless robe, as some people call it, was hiding away here in the town of Mitzgetta. And Mitzgetta, which is right outside of Tbilisi, was the old capital of Iberia. And when Nino finally gets to Georgia on the hunt for the seamless robe of Christ, she comes across Nana, Queen Nana, queen of King Mary and the Third. And Nana at the time is horrendously sick. She's on the verge of death, literally about to pass away. And Nino, well, Nino heals her. And now Nana is ready to convert because she accredits Nino's gods, the Christian God, not the gods, but the God, away from paganism towards Christianity. And she converts early fourth century. Wow, Maloba. This water is said to cure all ailments, of which I am suffering from many. Oh my God. Some of the best water I've ever had. Saint Nino. Maloba. Zalian Maloba. 
So now Nana, she's a Christian. Nino, she's obviously a Christian. They're starting to convert some of the people in the realm. But King Mirian, he's a pagan. And he's pretty pissed. He's not so happy with his wife that she converted from the true faith. Or at least what he believes to be the true faith. So one day, King Mirian, he's out for a hunt. And the chronicles are conflicting on what exactly happens, but something happens that causes him to lose his sight. Some people say that there's an eclipse and the sun's blocked out. Others, that he was literally blinded in a hunting accident. But either way, he can't see. And he prays, and he prays to the pagan gods, and the pagan gods don't answer. And he prays, and he prays to his wife's god, and he prays to Saint Nino's god. And all of a sudden, he can see again. And now King Mirian, well, he's a believer in the Christian faith. He's a believer of Saint Nino. And he decided to build this monastery some years later, at the end of the fourth century, after decades of converting his people, of converting the Iberians, of converting the ancient Georgians into the Christian faith. And today, Saint Nino, her body, rests at this gorgeous, gorgeous monastery in Kakheti, where she lived out her dying days. Madloba, see you soon.